Okay, uh, thank you very much for coming. We are very so exciting uh, to discuss about the possibility of the ION data center infrastructure as a service. Actually, we are now doing the uh, ION POC uh, together with NTT and Fujitsu and uh, NVIDIA. My name is Haida Sugiyama. I'm a uh, chief technology strategist in the Red Hat. And, uh, and I'm Josuke from NTT, and uh, I'm a director, and I'm leading a uh, r and group for ION DCI infrastructure. Um, I'm now Kiyoguchi from Fujitsu. Uh, I'm director of infrastructure system business unit and uh, responsible for developing OSS for our server product. ION stands for the Innovative Optical and Wireless Network. And I own Global Forum and uh, uh, made a MOU with the Linux Foundation to collaborate with uh, uh, three uh, projects, uh, Open Program Infrastructure Project, LFH Project, and LF Networking Project. In the LFH Project, uh, actually the, our uh, reference information model task force is now working uh, to explore the new blueprint uh, based on the ION infrastructure. And in the LF networking, actually uh, there's a several potential uh, uh, opportunity to collaborate. For example, the Open Daylight uh, Transport PC project, uh, which can be one of the ION APN controller that uh, ION member is not keen to explore. But uh, I'd like to highlight that the Open Program Infrastructure project this time because of the, this is a, a first trigger uh, when we ION Global Forum uh, collaborate with the Linux Foundation. Because you can see that the, this diagram, and uh, uh, we have the concept called the Function Delegate Network, which might be uh, enabling the network functionality inside the PCIe card or inside a, a Fightbox gateway. So that's why that, uh, we started to work with uh, uh, open program infrastructure project. Because now, uh, and uh, uh, Red Hat is one of the funding members of the open program infrastructure project. So we launched a uh, uh, collaborative session uh, uh, in the IOM member summit last year. So since then, uh, we are deeply uh, starting to collaborate with uh, each of the project in the Linux Foundation. And I think that maybe that you my, some of you might know about uh, uh, ION Global Forum, but uh, probably we still need to uh, explain what is the ION Global Forum. And uh, our uh, technical steering committee chair, uh, Kurara Ali, uh, actually, the, unfortunately, he's not available here, but uh, he made it, uh, she made a uh, video for you guys. So I quickly ran the, her video to introduce about ION Global Forum. Then uh, uh, also probably you might need to know about uh, what is uh, uh, each member company's approach to the ION Global Forum. So that's why I, I invited uh, Kuribaya-san and uh, he will talk about any the approach about ION Global, uh, how they can enable the ION Global Forum technology. And then also I covered the OPI project. Unfortunately, the ELAT is our chair of the uh, use case working group with the OPI project. It's not available here, actually, unfortunately, but uh, uh, I will cover the, his part about uh, why we need OPI in the ION Global Forum uh, data center infrastructure. Then the one of the key features we are now adopting is a composable desired infrastructure, which uh, we try to uh, adopt uh, desired computing to compose the multiple type of the device, and like a DPU and IPU and the GPU or, or with, together with the uh, uh, Intel CPU. So uh, I invited uh, Fujitsu, uh, uh, August Sam of the Fujitsu, uh, he will talk about the uh, current uh, status of the composite of this site infrastructure uh, development status, and uh, also he will share the current gap what is the challenge uh, to enable, to realize the ION technology? Okay, with that, uh, let me run that uh, uh, the quick video that uh, Clara is. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Clara Lee. I work for Intel as a senior principal engineer on standards. I also serve as an ION forum technology senior committee chair. Thank you, Sugiyama san, for inviting me to the session. But unfortunately, I couldn't attend in person. I hope this video can give you an overview on ION forum. 
ION stands for Innovative Optical and Wireless Network. The forum was established in January 2020. It now has 135 members across network service providers, equipment manufacturers, solution providers, and end users. The objective of the forum is to develop reference architecture, frameworks, specifications for the next generation communication and computing infrastructure, and leverage the evolution of optical communication and photonics, electronics, and converged technologies. So this page shows the overall ion group forum work landscape. On the, on the use case side, the forum looks into various consumer and industrial use cases, such as area management, industry management, level entertainment. It also works on building a digital twin framework for the various use cases. On the technology side, the forum develops open or photonics network, data-centric infrastructure, and ion security that targets at enabling future communication computing infrastructure with order of magnitude improvements on throughput, energy efficiency, and enable post-quantum security. Built on top of the communication computing infrastructure, the forum also looks into domain-specific technologies, such as mobile network front hall and network, network function virtualization, data storage and exchange, and the fiber sensing. To date, Ion Group Forum has published several deliverables on uh, 2030 vision, use cases and requirements, technology outlook, functional architecture, reference implementation model, and proof, proof of concept references. All documents can be accessed in the Ion Group Forum website. So this concludes the brief overview on the forum, and I will hand over to Schemathon to continue the session. So we have a main document already published, actually. So you can download that document and to read, but uh, there are lots of documents, actually. So it's not easy to read everything. So that's why we are here, and we try to have this kind of a session uh, many times to uh, discuss with you guys, that, uh, to discuss about the possibility to use in the ION Global Forum. Actually, POC is uh, our external activity that any, uh, any guy uh, can try to use the uh, ION infrastructure to contact the POC together, actually. And another probably question you might have, uh, what is the ION company, member companies doing for the, in the ION Global Forum? So <clears throat> I'm inviting the uh, NTT Kribesson, uh, uh, and uh, he will talk about uh, NTT's approach about ION. As you might know, the NTT announced that, uh, to run the ION 1.2.0 service to deliver the all 14 network. But it's not only the all 14 network service, like there are many things that are working in the ION Global Forum, especially the computing uh, industry uh, evolution. Uh, they are working on the new computing architecture. So I'll hand over to Kribesa. Thank you. And Okay, so uh, from here I'd like to explain the concept and also challenges of ION. And uh, ION is the next generation a compute ICT infrastructure uh, aiming to achieve a quantum leap of enhanced broadband, lower power, and lower latency. And this, this slide shows the target performance, and uh, the target performance will be uh, 100 to 200 better than the uh, those of the conventional uh, technologies. So actually, uh, the, the target performance is not easy to achieve. So collaboration is very important to gather uh, many people, knowledge of many people from uh, various uh, fields. So we have started our global forum and also started a discussion with relevant communities such as Linux Foundation. And the key technology of ION is electronics to photonics. So this slide shows the approach of ION for networking. Uh, networking of ION uh, is going to fully leverage optical technologies. So uh, ION te network uh, is going to shift from repeat of switching to direct connection to APN. This approach can realize a direct easy connection with virtual broadband and also low uh, latency. And uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, approach of ION for computing infrastructure. 
I want computing infrastructure is uh, try to leverage uh, also photonic technologies towards next generation disaggregated computing infrastructure. Uh, this shifts from a uh, box oriented server based infrastructure to a fully disaggregated computing infrastructure. So component devices uh, which composes a conventional uh, server are disaggregated and connected with, the, uh, with each other via a high speed photonic network. And also and forming a hardware resource pool. And uh, this approach uh, can improve resource usage and also power efficiency by allocating the necessary amount of computing resources to workloads at the component device level. So this slide shows the data centric infrastructure for CPS. CPS means a cyber physical system. And, uh, to improve performance and energy consumption in massive data handling and processing in CPS, we are going to apply a APN and also a disaggregated computing technologies to this infrastructure. The computing sites are connected with each other via a APN we call a data center exchange, and also we apply disaggregated computing technologies to each computing site. And also a hardware resource pool will help uh, to create hardware accelerated data pipeline for uh, efficiently handle or efficiently process a mass data coming from uh, many devices. So ION is a very long term uh, concept, uh, but uh, we are also taking a step by step approach to show that, to show or to demonstrate the part of our ION's concept, also to promote uh, early adoption of ION technology in real business. So this shows that uh, uh, one of the such a POC is a uh, real-time video AI analysis. And uh, this POC is supported by Fujitsu, NTT, NVIDIA, and Red Hat. In this POC, uh, we are going to demonstrate efficient utilization of ge geographically distributed resources with lower latency and lower power consumption. We are trying to use a two different uh, server configuration. One is uh, x86 plus GPU based, and the other is converged device based for uh, AI inference. And we are also trying to uh, apply a hardware accelerated technologies uh, such as advanced coproding to GPU an efficient data transferring across APN based one G, uh, with a GPU direct RDMA and also a converged device based uh, low power AI system. And we are also trying to ap apply a management uh, platform uh, OpenShift to, <coughs> so uh, this POC is integrated with our container platform as well. So, uh, Key word for the uh, DCI is uh, dynamicity, I think. And the uh, necessary type and the, the, num the number of accelerators can vary depend on the various factors. So it is necessary for the uh, next gen infrastructure to create modified release logical servers with appropriate configuration on demand. There are many factors uh, to change the, such appropriate configuration and one of such a uh, factor is business growth. And as shown in this slide, uh, according to the business growth, we need uh, appropriate a scale up or a scale out for uh, meet the customer's demand. So I'd like to uh, show the several examples of scaling. One is for uh, x86 CPU plus GPU based configuration. Uh, this is a typical configuration for AI, and uh, this as a service will be uh, capable of uh, flexible scale up and scale down, and also scaling out and scaling in for the given workload. And the next slide shows the scaling of a converged device base. A converged device means uh, is a uh, Accelerator card, which integrates both a DPU, IPU, and also GPU. In this case, uh, we can take a more simplified scaling approach. 
uh, because a DPU uh, accompanies the cards, cards has both functionality of networking and also AI function. So this is uh, this shows the uh, uh, dynamicity of what we should we want to support and. Uh, uh, Tsugiyama-san and Okuchi-san will show the potential uh, candidate of, uh, for this solution. Thank you. And uh, let me add uh, one more information. That, uh, because uh, Retat is also a member of the, this uh, POC team uh, to enable the open system on the x80 host uh, uh, to expand the uh, GPU and the uh, uh, smart leg. In addition, in addition to that, uh, we are now uh, implementing the microsystem, which is a mini open shift, it's a mini Kubernetes, running inside the ARM CPU in the converged uh, GPU accelerator, which are uh, in this case NVIDIA A100X. So we are now supporting two types of patterns. Uh, one uh, pattern A is just run at the open shift on top of the x86 CPU to expand the multiple GPU. And uh, pattern B is that we enable the microsoft inside the DPU and uh, GPU accelerator, uh, compact GPU accelerator to scale out multiple uh, uh, GPU, uh, uh, GPU compact GPU accelerator. So we try to keep the uh, both pattern in order to keep the flexible deployment. Because it's up to the service provider how to deploy, how to expand the system. Okay, one of the current bottleneck is that uh, because we are now basically using that the pre-configured code server, which is not possible to scale up, no, without uh, changing the system. But uh, in the IOM data centric infrastructure, we can logically scale up with adding the more PCI device card through the composable desired infrastructure. That is, uh, I like to, uh, uh, Augustan to explain later. But uh, this, you, you can see that the pattern B is similar to the, what uh, our uh, open program infrastructure project is doing. Uh, they are now trying to enable the uh, Linux OS inside the DPU and IPU. That's why the, we are starting to work with the open program infrastructure project. Maybe, I just briefly explain about what is the Open Program Infrastructure Project. I will go actually, uh, uh, because uh, we are the member of the Open Program Infrastructure Project, we are now targeting to enable the uh, Linux OS inside the DPU and IPU to increase the intelligence of the each uh, infrastructure service, network service, and storage service, and the managed security service, because of the we see that the many uh, offload functionality so far uh, it's available. Yeah, we can try to integrate the offload functionality inside the DPU and IPU and uh, to add more control uh, intelligence for the network infrastructure service or storage service uh, before transfer the user data to the x86 CPU. There's a many solution there. So we are now exchanging the idea through that uh, uh, OPI use case working group. And uh, uh, actually that, uh, in the OPI, there's a, a, a new, uh, event uh, I held in uh, US called uh, o OCP Global Summit. Uh, their member is demonstrated one of the uh, uh, activity. Uh, they enabled the uh, open system DPU and running at the NGINX proxy and to manage the user's traffic and uh, transfer, uh, transfer the user data to the x86 uh, host open shift. This is one of the uh, scenarios they are now uh, enabling, but there are many use cases actually uh, we are now discussing. Uh, actually, uh, on behalf of the ALAT, I try to cover this uh, slide because of the, uh, basically the ION Global Forum is starting work with a use case working group in the OPI project to share the use case each other to explore the common goal. Uh, actually, at the, uh, uh, last time we shared the network use case and uh, they also agreed to adapt that use case. It's uh, relating the UPF use case and, uh, and also that uh, uh, this uh, AI use case is one of the candidates to work together with OPI. And, uh, in the OPI project, actually, actually they are also targeting the gen, uh, generative AI and uh, enable the DPI and IPU for the 
uh, AIML Federation. And uh, in order to do, they need a more high bandwidth that the I1 can provide. So we, can, we, can, we have many opportunities to collaborate together. And as I like also highlight why OPI is needed in the data center infrastructure. As I mentioned a little bit about uh, I own data center infrastructure adapting desired computing. So it, when we enable the desired computing, one of the concerns is that, that there might be too much uh, transaction uh, within the PCI fabric between the CPU host and PCI uh, card. Uh, but uh, uh, OPI, if we use that OPI, we enable the network functionality or stage functionality inside DPU and IPU. So that means that uh, we don't need to uh, transit the, uh, many traffic over the PCI to the CPU because our functionality is offloaded inside the DPU and IPU. So uh, this is why that we are now working with the OPI team on how to enable the DPU and IPU in the compost of this site infrastructure. It's not only just a simple card, actually. It's more intelligent card we are now adapting inside the DPU and IPU. In our case, uh, we, are, we can try to enable the open shift inside the DPU and IPU or micro shift into the, inside the DPU and IPU. And this is a, a concept of the, uh, what, uh, about, about uh, data center infrastructure as a service. I own data center infrastructure subsystem to enable to compose the uh, what type of logical service node for each workload? It's a kind of the purpose-built logical service node. Logical service node means the kind of the uh, code server, but a dynamic configur uh, configurable code server. We can try to integrate the uh, x86 CPU along with uh, many GPU, many DPU, and many IPU, uh, depending on the transaction, actually. So, uh, for example, the, uh, in this case, ingestion node uh, with AI inference. Uh, AI inference node needs many GPU cards. Not necessarily to use the many CPU, x86 CPU. Within the single x CPU, we can add many GPU PCI card in the composable desired infrastructure. That's why we need a composable desired infrastructure feature. So you can compare this. Uh, for, uh, in the, this table, I just list up the, uh, one of the uh, example, and uh, we can add 20 GPU for one CPU. So we can scale up the uh, AI function uh, performance, and also similar thing that in the 5G radio access network, uh, as you might know, uh, we, when we build the disable unit, we can use the GPU for the layer accelerator. Similar thing. That, uh, in the current uh, x86 CPU, actually the most of the case at the maximum uh, massive MIMO uh, is uh, 64 64T64R, uh, uh, but uh, we can expand the 20, maybe 20 uh, 64T64R multiple R. We, we can upgrade uh, 20 times larger than uh, uh, existing the radio access network. We can upgrade many radio units if we can expand the GPU it was scaled out in the se a single CPU, anyway. So it's a composer disaggregator infrastructure feature is one of the key uh, technology. So I'd like to hand over to uh, Ogisam Fujitsu and uh, what is a composer disaggregator infrastructure and uh, what is the current challenge of the uh, composer disaggregator infrastructure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I I would like to explain the uh, composable disaggregated infrastructure. Uh, composable disaggregated infrastructure, CDI, is uh, emerging new server architecture. Uh, it disaggregates existing servers into uh, separate component in resource pool. And then it composes uh, custom made server by software definition. Uh, we call these servers composed bare metal. How does it work? Uh, in resource pool, all components are connected, connected to PCIe or CXL or photonic, photonic switches. 
And CDI management software uh, control the switches uh, based on user demand so as to create composed bare metal. Uh, CDI has some features. The most notable feature is uh, to create custom-made servers on demand. For example, uh, it can create GPU-rich servers or uh, memory-rich servers. It also creates uh, server clusters. This feature is especially helpful for uh, I on DCI node. And when these servers are not used anymore, user can uh, return, return those servers to resource pool. So this architecture minimizes unused resources and uh, reduce the total cost. The second feature is it enables the compose, composed bare metals to, 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 uh, to detach or uh, attach PCI devices, depending on the workload. Uh, let's consider AI system, for example. Uh, when the system is used AI running at night time, CDI can attach GPUs and provide higher performance for running. And when the system is used for AI inference at daytime, CDI uh, detach GPUs and save power consumption. So you, by using CDI, user can balance high performance and power saving. To summarize, uh, CDI has some advantages. It contributes to saving energy consumption and reducing total cost as described left of here. But of course, there is a trade-off. CDI has advantages in total cost only when using lots of GPUs. And one more feature, it enables uh, composed bare metal to scale up and down. From these advantages, uh, CDI is expected to be a solution for ION DCI node. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, so we talk about uh, uh, <coughs> ION data center infrastructure activity and uh, also uh, talk about uh, what is a uh, composite of this side infrastructure. And now the discussion time. And uh, first of all, I, I summarized uh, uh, some uh, question uh, in, uh, also uh, cover in the recap. Uh, so maybe maybe the uh, 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 we have to uh, recap that one thing that uh, why the ION data center infrastructure needed. Maybe you might you guys might need know. And uh, also why the CDI can fit the ION data center infrastructure subsystem. So. I'd like to uh, quickly quick and answer the wider ION data centric infrastructure. I think uh, yeah. ION data centric infrastructure has a benefits for both uh, provider side and also user side. For provider side, uh, utilization of APN relax the, uh, the constraints regarding a distance. So now it's getting very difficult to construct a data center in city area, but uh, by utilizing APN, we can construct the data center in more suburban area. So such kind of uh, flexibility we can get uh, by using uh, APN. And also uh, component device level disaggregation technology will increase the usage of resource and also save uh, power consumption. Uh, this means uh, we can get a better uh, 
better OPEX and also CAPEX. This means we can reduce the cost and uh, also this, can, this means users benefit because uh, the price also will be reduced. So and also for users, what's it? Uh, okay. Let me, uh, let me, uh, APN means that the all photonic network. Right? APN, uh, yeah. oh yes, all, yeah. all photonic network. And for user side, uh, by using uh, this data center infrastructure, we can support more wider range of uh, use cases, uh, such as uh, rotary enhanced broadband, and uh, also lower latency use cases. We can support uh, these kind of uh, more advanced use cases by using data centric infrastructure. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, with using all 14 network nationwide uh, Japan, and uh, we can design the uh, decided computing infrastructure. And uh, especially for the uh, AI, uh, we need exchange of many uh, uh, data. Uh, so uh, this is why that uh, one of the uh, potential use cases is AI Federation. And it's, uh, at least in Japan, yeah, we have a lots of the fiber. <laughs> okay. So and also we can uh, animate many electric devices. That means that we can reduce the energy consumption. And uh, that is one uh, challenge. That's why the, uh, we are set the many, many high goal. I don't know, the 125 uh, times the fast and uh, and. Uh, also, uh, what about uh, how, why the CDI can fit the ION data center infrastructure? Maybe could you uh, answer that? Yeah. Uh, so, so. I think there are two main requirements of ION DCI node. Uh, the first one is uh, create DCI node, sorry, logical service node, LSN. Uh, on demand. And, second and the second requirement is uh, to balance uh, higher performance and uh, uh, power saving. For the first requirement, uh, CDI create uh, composite bare metal on demand and uh, based on based on uh, user demand. For the second requirement, uh, CDI enables uh, composite bare metal dynamically uh, scale up and down. As a result, uh, it contributes to uh, not only uh, provide higher performance, but also uh, saving power. Uh, for, for this, uh, uh, for this reason, uh, CDI seems to uh, satisfy the requirements, and it is expected to be the solution for ION DCI node. Thank you. Uh, any other question about the Composite design Infrastructure? No? Okay, I have another question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't this out, but uh, what about the CXL? And uh, I didn't hear the, uh, too much about the CXL in the, your presentation. Do you have any idea to adapt the CXL technology? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we uh, developed uh, right now using uh, PCI Express switch. But, uh, uh, next year, we will use a uh, CXL switch, and a uh, uh, CXL switch uh, provide a uh, uh, CXL memory, and uh, user can uh, use more uh, a larger larger memory uh, space, and. Uh, And using CX version 3, user can also use a uh, CPU pool. So uh, there are uh, lots of uh, possibilities using CX, CXL technologies. OK. So the uh, Composite Design Infrastructure uh, is now ready to deploy within the existing PCI 
uh, bus. And uh, when the CXS is available, so the CDI itself can ex uh, extend to support. As well as the PCI device card support the CXL interface. Yes. OK, thank you very much. And uh, also, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, hear about uh, what is the current challenge about uh, maybe start from the uh, Kubasa about uh, converge the GPU accelerator or OPI. Okay, uh, as uh, Sugiyama san said, uh, our use case like a CPS need to handle massive amount of data and also process uh, such data. So this uh, task uh, sometimes overwhelms CPU, so we need to uh, efficient offloading technologies. And I think uh, TPIP or combined GPU accelerators are a good a solution for uh, offloading uh, of uh, CPU tasks. But uh, uh, now uh, many vendors uh, provide uh, many kinds of uh, DPIPU-like technologies. So uh, the key challenge will be uh, unified management for mm -hmm. uh, such new technologies. Actually, this, this kind of uh, diversity, the current diversity make uh, difficult to handle uh, new technologies. So I think OPI is a good community to address uh, this problem. Yeah, I agree. The unified management is so important. That's why we are starting to work with the OPI, Open Plan Infrastructure Project. Uh, in the OPI project, the Intel and the Marble and the NVIDIA and the and AMD are uh, joining, and was ARM joining. So yeah, we can discuss at how we can manage at the uh, multi vendor environment in that case. And uh, what about uh, uh, Ogisan about a uh, challenge of the CDI? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, CDI aims to automatically attach or detach PCI devices to uh, composite bare metals, depending on the uh, user workload. To do that, uh, um, orchestrator or uh, controller uh, detect the load and uh, uh, give instruction to CDI. I think uh, Kubernetes dynamic resource allocation DRA can be a solution. However, there are two challenges. First, uh, we need to uh, we need to uh, specify the um, uh, standard communication way between DRA and CDI. And second, uh, a second uh, programmable devices such as GPU and DPU. Uh, have to uh, move program on it before hot removing. Uh, we need uh, something, uh, some uh, interworking mechanism. So uh, we need work, need to work on these challenges. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think that in terms of the DP and IP, I think that uh, this uh, topic might be we can bring to the OPI project. Uh, mm -hmm. They are probably very interested in uh, how to manage uh, in, within the, uh, the CDI. I think we are running time. So I'd like to give you guys uh, about the uh, next step for each uh, start from NTT. Yeah. Uh, Before finish. Yeah. yeah uh, next step. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I, I'd like to conduct a POC uh, one by one. Now uh, I showed the, uh, the current POC, but uh, we are going to, uh, of course, combine C CDI technologies and also combine uh, accelerator technologies. And we would like to show the effect news uh, in, yeah, soon. Okay. Uh, we developed uh, the, uh, some prototype uh, for, for our challenge. And uh, we plan to uh, some uh, presentation in uh, next KubeCon. So uh, if we 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 can present present we can do presentation, it's happy. <laughs> okay. Okay.
which is right, uh, uh, a prepared park. OK, I think it is time. OK, uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we are there. Uh, we are uh, here. So if you have any questions, uh, please reach us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.